I think craftsmanship is not just doing things right, but I think about being curious. There's no doubt that rice is really, really critical part of making sake. It's just a really, really delicate. You need to, you know, watch it like you watch a, a newborn baby. It takes a lot of trial and error to find the right rice for the style of sake you're after. Making sake is more of a passion. It just feels so natural. My name is Noriko Kamei. I make sake. Just me and my husband and our daughter. It's a small family owned business in San Francisco. Always fascinated me that you could get such flavor profiles from just rice. How does that happen? We start with the rice. Rice is really, really key. And I control that all the way from the farmer through the drying, through the milling of from brown to white rice, and then from white rice to the actual sake rice. So I'm controlling the whole process there. As we don't do any heat fermentation, our product is alive. There's all those enzymes, there are still some yeast alive and active inside there, so it is very much a live product. With grain-based alcohol, like beer or sake, uh, we first need to convert the starch in the grain to sugar because yeast cannot eat starch. And with sake, we use this microorganism called koji. Koji is a fungus a lot like a mushroom. It came to Japan from China about 1,700 years ago. It works as enzyme to turn rice into sugar to make alcohol. She'll take eight to 12 grams of the koji spores, which just look like little mushroom powder, and she'll sprinkle it all over there, massage that in there, do that twice take the humidity down, turn the temperature up, and then over the next uh, 10 hours, she will continuously slowly spread that rice out, monitoring the temperature and the humidity to make sure that we're maximizing the growth of those enzymes. I went and spent 10 years in Japan and fell in love with sake. While in Japan, there was a certain style of sake that I really was attracted to. It wasn't really available here in San Francisco like it was in Japan. We couldn't find the type of sake we liked. Why don't we make it? And that's what we specialize in. Probably better than 50% of the sake we sell locally in the Bay Area is this unpasteurized sake. What I'm going after is not the type of sake that, that only goes with certain food. You know, I expect it to be drunk with not just sushi, but with burrito and pizza and steak and all these variety of the American, you know, everyday food. Hazy Delight is our newest sake in the family and it is my signature bottle. I created and developed a flavor profile and came up with the name and the label. After coming back from my training in Japan, one thing I was very frustrated with was the American sake market and how you only see very sweet dessert-like sake that sometimes has fruit juice like strawberry, mango, watermelon, and I thought there was a big opportunity there to broaden people's understanding of what sake can taste like. All of our sake is made to fit the local climate, the local culture and cuisine, but I wanted a, a line of sake that was very specifically San Francisco themed. We're the hippie country. The cannabis culture is really big here. Hazy Delight, it almost sounds like a cannabis-like strain. 
Also, the name Hazy、uh, came from the idea that Nigori Sake, it's typically called cloudy sake here, and to distinguish from that, but also help people see that it's similar but like a lighter version of the cloud, we went with Hazy. My name is Michael Van Dyke. I'm a fifth generation rice farmer in South Sutter County. For Sequoia Saki, we're growing a five acre plot of a California medium grain. We narrowed in on a variety of rice that was readily available, but it wasn't organic, the style that we wanted. And that was 205, which is Cal Rose. And that was the one that we chose with our farmer, Mike, to start growing for us. He was very kind. He had a field in his backyard that he said, I'll give it a shot. You're a crazy guy. Sure, I'll help you out. And he was introduced through a friend of a friend of a friend. I have no idea how we would have ever found him unless somebody had introduced us to him. But it, thank goodness for less than six degrees of separation for us to find this fantastic farmer. And he is just wonderful. They're pretty fun to be around and talk with. They're so intensely devoted to their product and what they're doing. That's fun to see. This is the seed that he requested that we grow. We're all organic. We've been 100% organic production since the late 90s. Organics tend to have a little lower nitrogen being pushed at them, and, and it affects the grain quality. I don't know anything about sake. I know a little bit about growing rice. Getting to see that full connection to the end is kind of rewarding. The drought's been hard. On some of the ranches that we farm, this year our water allotment was zero, so there's no production. We've had multiple years in a row of no production. Where we're at here, our allotment is about 50% of normal. The problem is when you get those years back to back to back. There's a demand and a need for the crop we produce. But we're taking care of the ground, trying to be sustainable. The rice has to rotate out into another crop. We'll use those fallow years with the intent of increasing soil fertility and we'll capture water over the winter and attract migrating waterfowl, ducks, geese. They're eating weed seeds out of the field. It gives them a place to overwinter,、um, which benefits us. It's fun to see from the farmer end that the work that I put into the crop, you know, to deliver to them the appreciation that they have for it and, and the process that goes through to the end product, getting to see that full connection to the end is kind of rewarding. The best way to serve sake is with friends. Only three women sake brewers in America that I know of, and two of them are here. I'm proud that both of my women in my life are, you know, making sake. I'm just blessed, blessed by that. I'm just also blessed that they both enjoy it like I do. Me and my dad like to have fun while we work. I don't think I could have done this without him. It is a collaboration. Every day we have a new challenge and new discoveries. It's been like this for the last eight years, and I don't mind you know, doing this for 20 more years. <laughs>